that have no right to judge me, that, uh, that haven't gone through what I have gone through, being tracked and traced by uh, internal sources who I suspect they are watching me in my home and outside my home the moment I step my foot outside my door as if I'm some type of a criminal when I when of course I'm not why should I be punished for crimes I have never really committed of child abuse and abandonment and neglect why should I be um, um, stereotyped and uh, stigmatised uh, uh, based on a mental health label of minor personality disorder? In fact, it is them who are my bullies that are totally paranoid, totally delusional and total, total tyrants who are abusing my human rights and um, bre breaching my data, compromising my position, destroying everything I'm trying to build. There's nothing worse than that to have a government who, to over uh, use their positions of power to bully me and oppress me, which is 10 times worse than any type of depression or sickness, to be continually bullied up to death, to the point of death. And what makes matters worse is self-righteous couples that come along and say, oh, you should not reject your daughter and and they and they've never been single parents so and they've never been persecuted so they don't know what so what are what are they talking about so i've sacrificed enough for my daughter and um she's old enough to go our separate ways and um because precisely because i am alone i shouldn't have to be a, a single parent for the rest of my life and for for my daughter's sake and so God advised me to go and make some observations in the circle of um, Christian dating agencies. And I tried it at Christmas. My path was blocked. My apps were stolen. And um, um, through a political socialist that exploded an atom bomb in my face to say I have no freedom of speech, no freedom of movement. And everything that was necessary for me to re-establish and rebuild my life, they blocked it. So I tried it. I had to, my my profile had to be deleted because uh, a lot of the dating agency normalised domestic terrorism and normalised a macho behaviour where he has to be the alpha male, first seen and first heard, the type that sacrifices the woman and is not equally a mutual respect where they sacrifice each other. They don't sacrifice each other. They don't, it's not a self-sacrificial love. So it is a compromising love where um, the man always has to be dominant over the woman spiritually and physically. According to the Bible and according to God being my husband, it is the man, the gender male, that's supposed to be jealous, not the other way around for the woman. It is the male, the man, who's supposed to be dominant in the spirit, um, not in the physical sense, because of his muscle that has been condemned by God. His muscle, his physical strength has been condemned since the Garden of Eden. So he's supposed to be dominant in the spirit as a father and as a husband. Um, as for the woman, according to the Holy Spirit, she has to be physically dominant in the sense that she wants to be receiving sex, be recipient. She wants to enjoy sex. She wants to have children, as in my case. Um, she wants to be physically available and emotionally available, but be physically available to satisfy the man's um, need to be held, be touched, uh, be nurtured, uh, to nurture the children physically in case they're injured or while they're growing in their growth and development. This is a normal thing for a pregnant woman to be physically enjoying her body, whether she's fat or thin. And any man that does not respect my, my body being fat is not a man of God, he is the man of the devil. So this is the difference between the secular world, who have idolised what marriage is, compared to the religious world, who, has, who have God Almighty as an example of what holy marriage, sacrimony and 
a holy couple is. So God has been as a doctor to me. God has been as a father to me. God has been as a husband to me. So God can God be everything at the same time? Yes, because God is um, multifunctional. <laughs> and, um, and God is invisible for that reason. So many people point out to say, Oh, God does not exist because you can't see God. Actually, God is more powerful. We, we, as Christians, we live by faith and by the spirit of Father God more than sight and uh, more than uh, the five or six senses. So I do believe that God is real. I feel that God is real with my five and six sense, which is my intuition and instincts. Um, I believe that God has passed through the time that is not the same as our time that we know it and it pre-exists from the beginning to the end he is the true Alpha and Omega that says I am who I am who I want to be and God has always chosen those who are suffering even titled as Emmanuel God suffers with us so to provide that basis of coherent co coherency in our thinking is um, arbitrary to, to my basic needs so my basic needs is to be reasonable about my expectations is to be self-sacrificial um, for my commitment in a committed relationship with the opposite sex and to my children but my, my father's dad is dead so I don't have that commitment but my father, my daughter does not live with me for nearly 10 years so I don't have that commitment the government ha but the government has removed my parental rights so I cannot actually participate and pract put to practice my parental rights or her birth rights so there's no commitment there and none of which is my fault um, and so uh, this is what I'm putting out into the public to say no one else in authority has considered women who had gone through domestic violence and divorce. Anybody in authority only looks at the prim and proper couples who have normalized their demons compared to uh, the holy couples who, have, who, who are exposing demons and who are saying that love is a bit of both, compromise, where well, you have to be on your own. You don't have to share all your hobbies you don't have to share all your prayers with your husband. Even though you are one spirit, when you have sex, you, you are still your own person. So the Bible says, when you have sex, you become one. Um, yes, however, God is above the man gender. God, as my husband, is above man. So God is more than man. Therefore... I am still a unique spirit where I keep my prayers to myself and I don't have to lose my soul for the man, vice versa, the man does not have to lose his soul for the woman that he's having sex with. And this is where you have a logical conclusion of the universe and how God is object objective in the knowledge of the universal law of love. To say it isn't marriage, a marriage and um, a romantic relationship with the opposite sex is not only about commitment, it is there also as a comprom compromised love. To say, I am my own person, I am not you. I have my own policy rules that my no means no. I have my own inspirations and goals that is not you and if the man does not respect that or anybody in the opposite sex relationship um, they will have a reaction to it to say oh I must be morally wrong or, uh, for not agreeing with everything not laughing at every joke of my sexual partner which is totally rubbish to say I'm morally wrong and I have an allergic reaction similar to 
if I object or don't agree with my sexual partner on everything. So that's the point of, that's the perspective, religious perspective from a Christian view and biblical view, how I'm compromising my love. Because even though I haven't had sex for 15 years plus, only my daughter's dad who's now dead, um, he died in 2012. When I have sex with a man, I feel one in, with him. However, I'm still my own person, one in God Almighty, who is above the man and his penis and his sexual act. Or the woman and her vagina and her sexual act. So it is a beast. It is, uh, it is out of this world when you have human beings walking around in the street, showing off that they're married, showing off that they're a couple, to me, they're the same as a, having putting a penis on their head or a vagina on their head. They don't have a nose, they don't have a mouth, they don't have eyes or features on the face. They're, they're, they have, they're faceless because they're boasting in their genitalia, they're boasting in their sex, and they're boasting that they're a sexual couple. So there's so much more than the assumption to assume that the foundation of marriage is only about commitment. There's the world around us, including um, those that are making assumptions, um, compared to those that are hypocrites when it comes to um, authority and control and who controls what. So if he has more money than me, what would I expect? If he's showing off about that money, I would want him to lose every penny and make sure that he does not love money more than God. I'm into spending the money rather than saving the money because what's the point of saving it all to take it in the grave in, in the coffin with you? So money is there to make friends and to support people who are part of my working environment and the social environment um, co as a Christian ultimately compared to those who are passing by untrustworthy and into humanism, which is also a false religion. It's, it is a religion, but it is a false relationship with God. They don't have a relationship. They have a routine and a structure, which is the foundation of humanism, which is a false Christ uh, or an antichrist. So if a guy touches an elephant, if a man touches a, a lion, if a man touches 